Okay then gang, so we saw in the last lesson that whenever we currently make a change to the code and save the file, we don't get an automatic hot reload in the emulator. We have to manually restart the app using this green arrow icon to see those changes take effect. And that's because the way hot reload works in Flutter is that when changes are made, it reruns any build function that the change was made in to rebuild that part of the app. And then the app automatically updates to reflect that rebuild in the emulator. Now, currently there's no build function in this code anywhere. So when we make a change to the text, for example, Flutter doesn't have a build function to rerun in order to catch that change because this text widget isn't within a build function. So when we talked about making custom widgets using classes early in the course, we saw that those classes contained a build method, which returned a widget tree. So if I made a custom widget using a class, then added a build method to it and placed the text within that, then it should mitigate this problem. And we should see a hot reload whenever we change that text then. So let's try this out. I can boilerplate a new stateless widget in VS Code by typing STL, which stands for uh, stateless, and then hitting tab. And this creates a new class for me, which I'm gonna call home with a capital H. And you should start your class names in Flutter with a capital letter. So then let's have a look at what's going on. First of all, you can see that it extends the stateless widget class, meaning it inherits all the functionality that a stateless widget should have in Flutter. And by the way, when we say stateless, we mean that the widget won't contain any state that changes over time or in reaction to maybe a user event. So for example, we won't be fetching and updating data in this widget, or we won't be toggling whether something shows or hides within the widget or tracking user input in any way. These are all things that require some kind of state within a widget. And for those, we can use a stateful widget instead of a stateless one. And we're gonna see those in action later on. But anyway, this class extends the stateless widget class, which contains all the functionality a stateless widget needs. Inside the class, we can see two things. First of all, a constructor for the class, which takes in a single argument called key, which is defined within the widget class it inherits from. So we say super.key to pass that key up to its parent class. Now all widgets in Flutter have this optional key argument so that when we instantiate a widget, we can pass a unique key into it if we need to. More often than not, you're not gonna do that. You're most likely gonna need keys when you work with things like lists of data so that Flutter can uniquely identify each list item. For now, we don't need to do anything with this key other than allow it to be passed in as an argument to this constructor. After that, we've got a build function which should return a widget or a widget tree. Now above this function, we can see the override declaration, which just means we're overriding the inherited version of this function because this function also exists on the parent class that we extend, right? Inside the function, we automatically get access to a build context object as a parameter. Now, this context object, you can kind of think of as information about the location and environment that this widget is in within the application. And we sometimes need to pass this context object into certain functions so that those functions have that information too and they can use them. So you'll see this context object passed around a little bit and also in every build method as a parameter too, in case we need it. Anyway, within the build method, we return a widget or a widget tree, which remember is just a bunch of widgets nested within each other, which we'll see soon enough, I promise. At the moment, we're just returning this placeholder widget, which basically creates a big box to fill up all the available space and puts a big red cross in the middle of it. Now, at the moment, if we restart the app, nothing's gonna change. We're still gonna see the text we added before, and that's because although we've made this stateless widget, which has a build function now that returns this placeholder widget, we've not actually done anything with it. It's just kind of floating around in space. So what we can do to see this home widget on the screen is update the body value of the scaffold to be that home widget instead of the text. And when that happens, Flutter's gonna look at this widget we made find the build method and it's going to use it to build up the widget tree or template for this home widget and display it in the emulator, right? So let's give this a shot. So to begin with, to see that change we just made, we do have to restart the app because we didn't just make a change inside this build method. We made the change up here. So we have to restart the app to begin with to see that big placeholder content. You can see this big cross that we get, right? Now, what I'm going to do is now change this content to be a text widget. So I can say text and then inside here we'll say hello 
ninjas again. This time I'm just going to save. I'm not going to restart. And hopefully, because we're now inside a build method, Flutter is going to rerun this when it detects that change. And we should see the hot reload in action. So I'm going to save that. Watch out over here. Yep, we see that change automatically. We did not have to use this refresh button anymore. All right, so let me just change this one more time to see it again. Save it. And yeah, we get that change automatically appear over here on the right. Awesome. So then now we've made our own stateless widget with a build function, which returns this text widget as its template, I guess. Now, currently you might be thinking, well, what is the point of going through this entire process of making a custom home widget with a constructor a build function? If all we're doing is just returning this solitary, lonely text widget, but two things, right? One, We've now enabled hot reload during development for any changes we make within a build function, which is much better for us. And two, the home widget can return much more content than just a text widget. It can return a whole widget tree with a bunch of widgets within it. I've only been using this text widget as an example to quickly get some content onto the screen, but we can show much more than just that. So then, now we know how to make these custom stateless widgets and we know about the build method within those widgets and how to return another widget within it, right? Next up, we're going to look at another pre-built widget, the container. 